Memphis, Tennessee police have killed 10 suspects so far this year, a number that seems excessive to many when compared to only two deaths by police in all of 1969. Officers have been cleared by grand juries in all of the 10 shootings. The most controversial took place at Jean's Liquor Store in the black community. Officers stopped to ask a vendor to move his stand off the business property. Store owner Eugene Mickey came out to protest, explaining the man had his permission to work there. The officers insisted on evicting the vendor. Mickey went back inside, witnesses say, to call a friend on the force for clarification. The two policemen followed Mickey into a storage room. One was heard to say, don't do that. Then, say witnesses, they started shooting. A store employee says eight or ten shots were fired and that he saw the guns pointing downward as though the victim might have been on the floor. Officers say Mickey pointed a shotgun at them and they fired in self-defense. Other shootings varied. Some suspects were armed, others were not. A police stakeout at another liquor store killed two blacks in an attempted robbery. One was armed. He was killed instantly with a shotgun. The other, unarmed, tried to run but was wounded near the door. He attempted to crawl out of the store and was shot again by the officer. Police have also been injured in these encounters. A suspect grabbed an officer's gun, ran to the rear of this house, and in a shootout, three policemen were injured. One remained in critical condition for several days. Of the ten deaths, eight were black. This figure, plus constant charges of police brutality in the black community, brought an investigation of the department by an ad hoc committee set up by the Memphis NAACP. Cooperation came from the U.S. Justice Department, area legislative, judicial, and enforcement agencies. Only the Memphis Police Department refused to take part. And says Director Frank Holloman, they'll refuse in the future. He says a citizens committee has no business interfering in police affairs. I feel that if the responsibility uh, and the duties are given to the, uh, to the police executives throughout the country, then those executives must, must have uh, the power in order to uh, carry out those responsibilities, and I do not think that a civilian review board of people who do not understand and who are not in a position uh, to, uh, to handle the problem uh, uh, can uh, help it. I, I, I do not see the reason why we should have a civilian re review board when we have so many review boards at the present time. And in each one of these cases in which you refer to as those individuals who have been shot, uh, in Memphis, every one of those have been considered by the uh, Shelby County Grand Jury, uh, which have been given all of the facts, and they have exonerated the police officers. And these are citizens of the community, black and white, who are sitting on the Grand Jury and who have been given all of the facts. In addition to that, we have the FBI, which investigates most of these cases where a complaint is made. We have the Department of Justice, the Civil Rights uh, Division of the de uh, de Department of Justice, attorneys who also look at it. We have the federal grand juries. We have civil courts. So I feel that with all of that, together with the electorate, who can vote in or out any administration or any group, I think that that is sufficient. I think that is a democratic, uh, proper, uh, official way to, uh, to handle the problem. <laughs>
grown up seeing their fathers, mothers uh, badly treated, the, uh, the youngsters themselves in their teenage years have experienced uh, a certain brutalizing experience, either physical brutality or uh, psychic uh, brutality that's caused a, an enormous credibility gap between the police and this community. It is interesting to note that last year the Sheriff's Department of this county made 16,000, I won't sign it, 49 people. I think they uh, uh, are objective. I think they're fair. I think that they really believe that they have a responsibility for the safety and welfare of all the citizens, white and black. And I think they're dedicated professional men. I'm not lying on him. Both of me and him both use bad words. And that's the truth. This is hard down to now lie on that man. And you know, he know The director says Memphis citizens must accept police protection on the terms of those in power. And if the terms are not acceptable, the only recourse is through the electoral process. He says his policies will not be changed by citizen recommendations. Del Vaughn, CBS News, Memphis. Well, I think it, 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 is, it is some encouragement to the people who live in poverty to see these women come because it's an indication that they care, particularly on the day of this kind. And I think the good that will come will be the action. If they go back to that pleasure home and do nothing, then our efforts today have been in vain. Because, of course, he was your source of income. Perfect. Are you on welfare? Does Lester not have a, a, a lunch? Is it, are they not but, on No, lunch? no, this meeting... No, this $105. Do you understand any more now? I'm learning. I'm learning. Yes, I think you have to understand when you look around and hear the sights and sounds of the ghetto that if I think about my own home and I wish for these people a little bit more of what I had. It of course remains to be seen whether or not these 75 women were moved enough today to converge on Memphis City Hall next week. But at the very least, there was some evidence of a renewed dialogue here today between white and black, wealthy and poor. And that in itself may be enough to keep peace in Memphis this summer. Phil Jones, CBS News, Memphis, Tennessee.